Hello, hi, this is Agita, otherwise known as Sweet Revenge, otherwise known as Ebony, because that's my real name. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm Wolfdarian. Uh, I'm wearing fox ears today because someone borrowed my wolf ears and I'm quite upset that I spent ages making them, so I thought I might as well wear them. I'm wearing my collar today. <sighs> anyway, on a more serious note, um, I'd like to share with you uh, some personal experiences about my theory of being. And this may or may not apply to other people, but it's just my opinion. So how would I describe myself? I describe myself as therianthrope, meaning animal person drawn from the Greek terminology. The word lycanthrope simply means wolf person, which is fitting too. It's become so commonly used for, you know, in pop culture to mean the Hollywood werewolf, and I don't really want to associate with that. Yes, I wear fuzzy ears, but it doesn't mean I'm going to run around saying that we're werewolves. <laughs> so, how does this belief manifest itself in everyday life? I'm constantly in a part human, part wolf state of mind, um, but to varying degrees depending on things like mood or outside stimuli. Um, sometimes I feel more wolf-like than usual in my perception or my thought processes than others, in which case I describe that slide of mentality as a shift. Um, I occasionally feel phantom parts, like I feel ears, and um, for the sake of keeping said ears out of the way, people swatting hands over my head. And when, you know, you feel the wind blow through them and stuff, because I get sensory feedback from these hands, I find it important to uh, protect them, you could say. And having these physical fluffy ears more or less where my phantom ears should be kind of makes things make sense to me and myself, and to stop people from bashing into them by accident and to kind of shield them from the wind. You know, the most annoying thing is the fact that these phantom ears can swivel, but my real ones can't, so when I be hearing a loud noise or something, one ear will be, you know, cocked towards it, the other one is kind of in the same place, and it's like I'm hearing it from two different places at once. It's kind of confusing. Yeah. Tail two. So, please don't sit on it, or anything like that. So, when I wear my tail, it gives me a little leeway. Uh, how do I indulge my belief? Um, some shifts are involuntary. Um, these wolf-like desires or urges that I'm conscious of, that I know I want to do. Um, sometimes I can choose whether I want to indulge that or not. And there are some times where I just do it. And then someone will tell me what happened or well, several people will tell me what happened afterwards and I'll be so embarrassed like oh god I sniffed that person again or I started digging that spot again or I started chewing on that again or something ridiculous like that um, so I can choose in some cases whether or not I want to act on these urges usually in the company of close friends who know about my therapy, respect it um, I can allow myself to lick the muzzle rub up against loved ones Set the head scratch, tummy rub, not tummy rub. You make me so happy. Uh, yeah. Uh, on topic. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's best to let off steam than try and suppress these things because you're just gonna get cranky. Just like how you shouldn't hold in lots of rage, uh, suppressing shift for long periods of time can end up making you very stressful and more likely to not be able to control myself in like a stressful situation where I might revert to a wolf mindset. I don't know if it's a self-preservation type thing. Um, and to avoid that happening, I just, I find it much easier to just be myself, especially around people who know about the therapy pain they don't like. Yeah. Um, family and friends. Family don't know, except my grandmother. I prefer to keep it that way, because they're just, I don't think they would understand, or they think there's something demonic about being an animal inside. Yeah, but most of my friends refer to me as the wolf, 
or they will introduce me to new friends and say, ah, this is my friend, she's a wolf, <laughs> type thing. Um, they understand that for me being a wolf isn't a game, or an obsession with animals, unlike furries who just like animals a lot. Um, because my favourite animal is a horse, believe it or not, even though sometimes I'd like to eat them, I think they're lovely. I am completely naive, obsessed with horses. I'm enamoured with them, but I'm not a horse. There is a difference between really liking an animal and being a wolf. Um, yeah. Um, I think my grandparents can confirm that um, I acted quite animalistic right from the get-go, to be honest. Um, I always had an interest in animals growing up, but I was aware that I wasn't that animal. I think my favourite game is to like, kind of crawl around and be, be a lion, but not a lion. It'd be quite cool if I was a lion, and my screen has gone up again. <laughs> but, uh, I'm not a lion. Um, yeah. I can't help experiencing life as a wolf and human body. It's there whether I like it or not. And I seriously doubt people can suddenly become a fairy or just stumble upon the word and suddenly discover that they are there because it's such a major part of yourself I'm sure that you would just know and it's more a matter of you knowing to begin with and trying to find others than like stumbling upon random people on the internet and deciding that that's you because that's weird it's just latching onto something for the sake of it not to sound holier than thou or anything but hey <sighs> It's hard to find their ends together, to be honest. It doesn't matter how many people you find in the forum, I don't know. There just seem to be an awful lot more furries who are willing to meet up. And once they're in the suits, a lot of them have this unwritten rule that they don't speak and act randomistic. That's fine with me, because I can shift my little furry heart out and do what I like, and they'll no find it weird, which is great. Yay. So, hanging out with furries is good for that therapeutic aspect, but it's difficult because I never quite understand what it means to really feel like you're in the wrong body. I don't idolize wolves, I just am a wolf. It's not always fun. One thing I really hate about people is they uh, associate any kind of physical closeness with sex because being a wolf, I like tender people and another woman. And, and I like scratches, I like scratches just behind you, I love it. Um, but humans tend to associate everything in like sexual contact kind of way. And, you know, I like a lot of furries who seem to like fluffy butt sex. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I just, I just want to be cuddled. Someone please scratch me. <laughs> yeah, um, have I been ridiculed for my beliefs? Yes. Uh, but you know, there are lots who appreciate that I'm quite a mature person and, you know, kind of intelligent for my age. And, you know, I have a rational way of explaining it. Um, I think it's a psychological thing. Um, and I make an effort to differentiate between my animalistic and human behavior. I think I'm quite introspective. I'm not just going to roll with this and just run around saying, no, 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 that's it. Shh, accept that. And if people want to challenge me, challenge me. Because it will force me to think about myself even more. I think therapy is far more believable than a lot of strange new age beliefs. Um, I'm an ordinary earthly animal. I'm Mexican wolf. I'm not into strange spiritual things, guides, totems, shamans, and that kind of thing. It always confuses me. Actually, I'm a very ordinary person, apart from the fact that I'm a weird gothic elite thing. So, that's just me. I'm Agita, Ebony. I'm Mexican Wolf. And that's it, really.